once your age too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So everyone, start recording and introduce yourself on camera, or just like on the camera and ask a question. I'm Madison. Hello, Mark. Madison. Mm -hmm. Um, what was George Washington Carver most famous for? Well, George Washington Carver himself was was a noted scientist. He was involved in agriculture and he taught for many, many years at Tuskegee uh, Institute, now Tuskegee University in Tuskegee, Alabama. Now, most people know Dr. George Washington Carver as the man who came up with 300 different uses for the peanut. And the reason why, going back, backing up there, um, the peanut was introduced to plantings because most farmers in the South were planting cotton. And the cotton depletes the land of its, of its minerals, its resources. So after a few years of cotton planting, well then, you know, the, the, the soil is not, is not as good as it was when they started out. So George Washington Carver suggested that farmers should, should rotate their crops. And the peanut was one such crop that he suggested. It was something that, that, that grew, uh, it was cheap, it grew fast, and it was delicious. And he discovered that you could make over 300 different products from the peanut, not just peanut butter, but uh, other products from the peanut. That's what he's most famous for. Okay. He was one of the foremost uh, persons, uh, scientists, and persons involved in agriculture in the United States, if not the world. And he even came through Austin a few times and spoke here in Austin, too. Um, when was Carver Museum built? Well, the George Washington Carver Museum as it, as, uh, was started as the first neighborhood African-American museum in 1980. Uh, are Carver Library and Carver Museum two different structures? Like? That's interesting that you should ask that, Madison. The uh, George Washington Carver Library actually started in the 1930s, about 1935 was when the George Washington Carver Library started. And what happened was that it was a library, it started out as Austin's first public library downtown, and then the, a newer library was built in 1933, I should have said 33. And so then the, but, but, but blacks could not go to that library. And so the citizens, the black citizens of Austin spoke to the city about, about starting a public library over in East Austin. And so what the city did was they removed the old public library, uh, which was really across the street from where the newer library was built. They moved it over to East Austin, moved it to Angelina Street. Now, it was originally covered in wood, but they decided to go ahead and recover it, cover over the wood in that nice orange brick that it has now. And that was Austin's first branch library when it opened in uh, 1934. Anyway, um, and then, and that was, the, and it was named the George Washington Carver branch of the Austin Public Library in the 1940s. Now, in 1979, they built a new George Washington Carver branch of the Austin Public Library, which is the library that you see today. And the little, the little building that started out as the George Washington Carver branch of the Austin Public Library became the George Washington Carver uh, Austin History Center in 1980, the first neighborhood uh, African American museum in Texas. And then they moved to their new location in 2007, I believe it was. And that is the George Washington Carver Museum and Cultural Center. Now the little house itself is going to, is being uh, refitted and that is going to be a genealogical center so that you may go there and do look up records and uh, discover where you came from of uh, family history. Any, does that answer your questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, what kind of things went 
on in the slave cabin, cabins at Rosewood Park. Okay, that slave cavern at Rosewood Park once belonged to a man named Henry Green Madison. And Henry Green Madison was, was born a slave. Um, he became a free man and he built that little cabin, both he and his wife built that cavern, that cabin, and that is where they raised their kids. That's where, and it's only, it's a small two-room cabin, and they raised, what, about 10 kids in that small space. Now, interesting thing about Mr. Mr. Uh, Madison, and I have some notes on Mr. Madison. Mr. Madison, as it turns out, became, he was Austin's first black city council person. He was a city council person in the 1880s. Uh, and something else about Mr. Madison, Mr. Madison uh, was a union, a union soldier. Uh, well, he fought for the union during the Civil War. And if you remember your history, during the Civil War, Texas voted to secede from the union and join the Confederacy. But Mr. Madison fought for the union and in, he was a participant in the reconstruction process and he was an assistant at the Constitutional Convention of 1868-1869. And then in 1870, he served as a captain of an all-black unit in the 6th Regiment of the Texas State Guard. And he was a, a policeman also. And then he became a porter. And then he also worked at the Texas House of Representatives. He wasn't a member of the Texas House of Representatives, but he worked at the Texas House of Representatives. He was born 1843, he died 1912. Uh, was Rosewood named after anything in particular, or anyone? That's an interesting thing. Uh, there was a Rosewood named after anything. There was a community in Florida called Rosewood, but I'm not sure that Rosewood Park was named for that. But Rosewood Park came about because in 1928, the city of Austin approved of a master plan for the city. And the master plan in 1928 designated East Austin, where we are now, as a Negro district and they were encouraging blacks to leave other parts of the city and move over here where they would be able to attend schools, there would be churches over here, and also parks. Because prior to that, uh, the parks um, in the other parts of the city would not admit black people. The schools would not admit black people. So uh, this Negro district in East Austin was created to uh, encourage and force blacks to move this way where there would be schools there would be parks and rosewood park was the first you could say true the first result you could say of that 1928 master plan rosewood park was founded in 1929 uh, there is an old house over there it is the hippert house and it was built about 1868, 1869, that serves as administrative offices for the park. You've probably seen the house. And that's where the Henry Madison cabin is, too. All right, pause real quick. Everybody, we're going to stop recording.